I guess uh, stat uh, 1800 stack crunch. I really don't know why I put that. It's kind of a little bit premature, but uh, uh, we'll eventually get to stack crunch. But uh, the purpose of this video is to examine a two sample dependent means problem. Uh, those things are sometimes called matched pairs. Uh, they're also sometimes called uh, related means. Uh, these measurements don't come from two independent populations. Like, remember the previous example I, I used um, with the location. There's no reason to think that the sales from location 1 is any way related to the sales of location 2 if the experimental design is solid. Uh, the big difference is these measurements uh, are they're two measurements taken on the same person. Now, I've got an example here, and I want to uh, bring it up, and I've got it right here. So uh, a study was conducted to determine if taking a popular, uh, popularly advertised herbal supplement, uh, I can't read today, guys, resulted in weight loss uh, in obese males. So it took a sample of six students. Uh, six students, six clinically obese males. Uh, each subject was uh, made before starting the program. Uh, looks like they took the supplement for 60 days and they were weighed after. And uh, we want to see if there's uh, any statistical evidence to indicate that this um, uh, herbal supplement uh, leads to weight loss in this population uh, of um, of, of person. So uh, guys, first thing we would do is uh, it's important to understand that uh, our focus isn't really on these variables. Now granted, these variables are used to, to, to create the focus, but uh, our focus is actually on the difference. So when we have something like this, we uh, create a new column called the difference. So uh, the first person we would go uh, uh, 166, uh, uh, well, I, you know what we can do uh, either way. Uh, I'm going to take after minus, uh, after and subtract before. So uh, this person has a difference of, of 2 pounds. Uh, this person has a, a difference of minus 18 pounds. And then this person down here has a difference of minus 10 pounds. Uh, what this tells us is... Uh, Subject number one gained two pounds, so the uh, herbal supplement uh, fell a little short of his goals. Uh, number two, this person lost 18 pounds, and this person uh, lost uh, uh, 10 pounds. Now, uh, this is referred to as the D, and it turn, turns out that this column is actually the focus of our investigation. So granted, we use these two variables but they're used to create this measurement. Now, in Stack Crunch, uh, you'll see I have it up and uh, going here. Hopefully, I didn't make any typos. Uh, guys, I'm actually a pretty good typer. Uh, I just can't see, uh, so hopefully I didn't. So uh, something I could do is I could uh, uh, create some new data, uh, and I could go to, um, well, I thought there was a formula. Um, Oh, compute. Here we go. Expression. And uh, the expression, I just want to take the after uh, minus the before. And I want to go OK. And I want to have the column as difference. So compute. And I can see very quickly that I get the uh, differences for all six, not just the first two uh, and the last one. So, uh, you know, I can look at this. I can see that four of six or two-thirds of the people in the study lost weight, and uh, two people didn't. One person, the fourth person, actually uh, uh, gained, uh, looks like they gained four pounds, right? Now, going back over here, what I want to do is I want to focus on the mean for the difference, the standard deviation for the difference, and obviously the sample size for the difference. So that's going to be the easy part. Uh, that's going to be 6. So now I want to come in and find the mean and the standard deviation. 
uh, of the differences. So I can go to stat, summary stat, column, difference, and I want the mean and the standard deviation. Ah, done it. I'll just put the variance in there. Really don't need it, but. Um, so the mean uh, is negative 7.6666. So I'm going to go, I usually do these to four places. So I'm going to report negative 7.6667. And the standard deviation is 8.8015. All right. So we've got that information. So uh, let's well, let's just start the program, okay, uh, guys? All of these uh, test of hypotheses start with a alternative hypothesis. In this case, it's mu sub d equal to zero, not mu one minus mu two, because again, all of our focus is on one variable, the difference. Our alternative hypothesis is mu sub d not equal to zero. I'm going to test at 0 0.05. Uh, guys, the next step is to find the, uh, the test statistic. So our T stat in this case uh, is found by taking the X bar for the D over my SX for the D over the square root of N. So the X bar D is negative 7.6667. The standard deviation is 8.8015. And we have six obese males in our study. So grab your handy dandy calculator and um, 7.6667. And I'll share with you what I got. Let me get uh, some light on it. So uh, I get, uh, uh, it's, it's really important for obvious reasons to put the, uh, all the information in the denominator in parentheses. Otherwise, you get an order of operations issue. So we get negative 2.1337, right? Going to four places. Uh, so gang that's uh, our test statistic and uh, from that we can easily uh, uh, calculate a p-value so what I want to do is I want to uh, to work this first of all using a, a critical value approach So guys, we, uh, in this types of problems, we use a, a, a T, degrees of freedom equal to N minus 1. So we have six uh, subjects, so we use a, a T distribution, degrees of freedom 5. Because we want to separate our reject region and our fail to reject region using the critical value approach. So this is going to be T alpha over 2. And this is going to be plus T alpha over 2. We want 0.025 area in the upper and lower tail because we're testing at alpha equal 0 0.05. Well, gang, we're going to use uh, our... Uh, uh, calculator on StatCrunch to, to calculate this. So I'll go to T and I want degrees of freedom 5 and I want my area to the left to be 0 0.025. So I have negative 2.57. Is that fair enough? And I know the upper is going to be 2.57. So, guys, from the previous page, this is what we found. Our T stat is 
equals negative 2.1337 and that resides right there to the right of negative 2.57 so uh, although this uh, you know did seem to uh, lead to weight loss for four of the six participants, we do not have statistical significance. We can't generalize from these six people to, uh, to, to the results that indicate that this would uh, create uh, a weight loss uh, for, the, uh, for, for all the population. Uh, obese males is what I believe it was. All right, so from the critical value approach, we see that our test statistic falls inside the bounds of the T critical values, so we would fail to reject. All right, now how's the p-value approach work? Well, we know our p-value is going to be greater than 0.05, don't we? Well, the p-value approach really kind of reminds you a lot of the critical value approach, except it takes the test statistic and looks at the positive of that if we're doing a two-tailed test, and it calculate, calculates this area. Now, students get confused sometimes because these pictures look the same for the p-value approach and the p-value calculation. The picture looks the same as the critical value. The only difference is we're calculating this area to compare to the alpha instead of calculating the, the bounds. So this over here doesn't represent the alpha or the, failed, or the reject region. Uh, this is our p-value. But we're using different numbers here. Again, we're using, here we're using the critical value. Here we're using the test statistic. All right, so uh, this uh, again is, is, is pretty easy to do. Um, so negative uh, 2.13. So look at the area to the left of that. So we have 0.043, so multiply that by 2, it's going to be 0.086. You write that down so it'll be there when we get back over. Uh, guys, this is uh, greater than our alpha, so we fail to reject. So our p value approach and our uh, critical value approach agree. Uh, you fail to reject. Uh, going back to the uh, to the null hypothesis, when we fail to reject that statement, uh, the results indicate that there's not sufficient evidence to include that uh, to conclude that the mean difference is anything other than zero. Uh, it looks like to me we probably got what's called a power issue here. We have such a small sample size that uh, even though there's a difference that probably does exist there, we don't have enough power uh, to, uh, to find that statistically. So uh, if I was behind this study, I would, I would bump up my sample size, maybe go out and try to get, uh, you know, 30. Seems like 30 is the magic number and all this stuff, right? And I try to get 30 participants, have them uh, conduct the study and, and rerun it. Uh, we can't, we're not saying that... Uh, you know, there's not statistically significant difference in the, the before and after weight. We're just saying based on this sample, uh, we can't conclude anything other than mean difference equal to zero. Uh, next thing would be the confidence interval. And guys, confidence interval again is... made up of three parts. Our sample, our critical value, and our standard error. Well, guys, it's probably pretty clear what this is. That's our sample mean difference. These problems are modeled by the T distribution, degrees of freedom, n minus 1, so it would be a T critical value. And guys, our standard error in these is, uh, is, is pretty easy. It's uh, Sx for my uh, difference over the square root of n. Now, we've got that information someplace. Uh, the x bar 
difference was negative 7.6667. Our critical value for the 95% confidence interval, uh, gang, I know I have that. Or at least I thought I had it. Yeah, here we go. Was uh, 2.57. The um, well, huh. here we go. Uh, the sample standard deviation of the differences was eight point eight oh one five, and we're over the square root of six. Now, before we get, go any further, uh, what are you expecting? Are you expecting this difference to uh, contain zero? Well, yeah, we are, because we failed to reject the null hypothesis. But uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's calculate it. So I would go negative uh, 7.667. Uh, I always do the minus first, so 2.57 uh, times uh, 8. 0.8015 divided by the square root of 6. So guys, um, this is what I get. Let's see if I can make that a little bit clearer for you. All right. Um, so you can uh, screenshot that or pause it, uh, whatever you may need to do. So uh, we're negative uh, 16.90. Now up to 1.57. And I look at this, and the first thing that I uh, look at is I see that my interval contains zero, which in these difference of means, whether it's an independent samples t-test, uh, or a dependent matched pairs related that we're doing in this video, uh, you can see that um, uh, containing zero means that we have do not have significance, and uh, we fail to reject the null. Well, boys and girls, let's um, let's uh, let's go to Stack Crunch and and see how this uh, see how this works. So I go to stat, I'm going to go to tstat, I'm going to go to paired, okay. Sample number one uh, is before, sample number two is after, and I don't want them grouped. So save the differences, I'm going to do that. All that's going to do is replicate the 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 values that we calculated earlier because I wanted to uh, uh, demonstrate this um, uh, by hand. And uh, that's it. Go for it. Compute. Now you'll notice up here it created a new column as I told you. And it, you know, same column that we had except differences. So what it did instead of taking after minus before, it took before minus after. So it took the first one minus the second one. Uh, you're going to see that the only thing that will be different uh, is the mean is going to be positive instead of negative. Uh, so that's something you just have to, when you're, when you're doing this on uh, Stack Crunch, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, when you're doing this on math, my math lab, you just have to um, uh, read the instructions and see whether it's uh, looking at the, the mean difference of before minus after or after minus before. And it'll be uh, clearly uh, spelled out. But you can see that uh, the only thing that really differs, uh, the standard error doesn't uh, change. The degrees of freedom doesn't change. The mean will be um, uh, positive or negative versus negative or positive, depending on the, 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 uh, the, the uh, direction. And the p-value doesn't change. And the t-stat will be either be negative or positive based on what the mean difference is. So, guys, these things are, are, are uh, easy, to, uh, easy to calculate. Now, I want to change things up a little bit, and let's say the intent of the test was different. And this is really probably the way that you would carry this out in any sort of weight loss program. What you would really want to set out 
is to uh, in, investigate uh, the weight loss. So if people are using a weight loss, and that says that their their weight after is less than their weight before, so the difference uh, is actually um, uh, actually negative. So what I would, if I want to investigate this as a one tail test, uh, I would probably want to look that the mean difference is less than zero, right? So again, weight loss, if we're taking L1 minus L2, uh, if, if some, somebody weighs more than, uh, uh, well, wait a minute, I think I've got that backwards. Let's, let's, let's see. If they're uh, before and they're after, let's say they uh, weigh 170 and then they weigh 152, well, if this is actually working, then the difference uh, is actually um, uh, is actually positive. If we're taking before minus after, so I've got this wrong. So we want to uh, look at the mean difference being greater than zero versus the mean difference is being less than or equal to zero if we're doing truly doing a uh, a one tail test now uh, th uh, this is confusing uh, this is not the way i would do it i would uh, i would look at the after minus the before i always take the second measure and uh, it, it's fine you you just you, you just uh, it just depends on whether you subtract uh, one from two or two from one uh, for the uh, uh, the direction of the test that you're uh, that you're testing. Nevertheless, gang, uh, you still have a T distribution, degrees of freedom equal N minus 1. So in our case, it's going to be degrees of freedom equal 5. But if we're doing the critical value approach, um, we're going to put all of our rejection region in the upper tail. So we have 0.05 up here. So our uh, critical value for that, uh, go to stat, calculator, T. So we want all of our, um, value in the upper, uh, tail. So I want a 0.05 up there. So my T critical is going to be 2.015. Now, the difference there uh, turns out, well, which way am I looking, right? Again, I'm saying the mu difference is positive, so uh, that has me uh, subtracting before minus uh, after. So, guys, I would need to get rid of um, the first difference. So this is the one I need to look at. So 1 minus 2, 164 minus 166, negative 2. 174 minus 154 is a positive 18. Uh, so the positive number indicates a weight loss. So that's why we look at the right tail test as mu, D, mu sub D greater than uh, or equal to uh, 0. Now it turns out that uh, our T critical doesn't, uh, doesn't change. Except, uh, uh, except for the uh, the, uh, the the sign, uh, and it was uh, negative uh, two point one three. Uh, now it's uh, positive two point one uh, three three seven. So guys, we didn't get significance in a two tail test. But because the 0.05 is put in this all upper tail, what it does, if there's only 0.025 there, that would be about where the line is. But when we put all the 0.05 there, we get a bigger area of rejection in the right tail. Uh, and 2.1337 actually falls in there if we're testing mu d greater than zero. Uh, calculate uh, our p-value. So we're going to get uh, greater than 
1337. And you can see that our p-value is 0.043, which is, you know, just kind of just barely squeaks in less than 0.05, but uh, nevertheless, it's less than 0.05, and we get statistical significance. Uh, your confidence interval isn't going to change, uh, so uh, let's, let's go ahead and run uh, uh, t-stat paired. So column number one uh, we have before, sample number two we have after. Uh, group by, we don't really need to save the differences, we already have that. Uh, the guys here we're going to test at uh, greater than zero. Now again, I talked about that earlier, this doesn't change to less than or equal, which to me is a standard way of doing that. but. Uh, so guys, we go compute, uh, you can see that we get statistical significance. Uh, standard error is the same degrees of freedom are the same. Uh, and also, guys, uh, calculating a uh, one-tail test, the uh, uh, confidence interval doesn't change. It'll still be, uh, you know, change from negative to positive and positive to negative, but uh, still it contains zero. So... You know what, man? That's where it gets complicated. That's where you've got a t-test that run a 0.043 p-value, so we get statistical significance. Yet, when we run the confidence interval, uh, we get a confidence interval that contains zero, which indicates no significant weight loss. Uh, but uh, guys, typically, uh, you know, I don't run confidence intervals if I run one-tail test. Uh, because sometimes they do give uh, they do give a difference. So uh, you know they they always say there's three kinds of lies, uh, lies, damned lies, and statistics. I think Mark Twain said that. At least he gets uh, uh, he gets the credit. And it's stuff like this that gives statistics a bad name. Where you can uh, you know if if I've got an, uh, a vested interest in this uh, herbal supplement, and I want there to be statistical significance. Guys, I'm not reporting that confidence interval. I'm reporting the right tail, one tail test of hypothesis. I'm not doing a two tail test. I'm doing the one that gives me the result that I want. But that's why you take statistics. Everybody takes the statistics as like a, you know, a nugget of truth. If somebody puts numbers out there, usually the numbers are so complicated and over so many people's heads that they just don't even want to think about it. And they're like, wow, okay, this, you know, whatever. It's herbal supplements the greatest thing since sliced bread take it you'll lose weight but uh, the proof is in the pudding the proof uh, proof is in the details so you know i always say that i am the biggest skeptic ever when it comes to reading statistical results because i can find issues with everything too much power not enough power effect size wacky uh somebody did a two one tail test where a two tail test is not significant so anyway that's part of learning it's part of learning that there are ways to manipulate these tests, not completely unethical, because this confidence interval was, was produced ethically. It shows no statistical significance. The t-test that we did earlier was produced ethically. It showed statistical uh, significance, uh, significant uh, uh, weight loss, or I'm sorry, weight gain. Uh, so... Um, you know, again, it's it's just part of learning and and uh, understanding the the uh, the maybe the trickery of um, uh, of uh, statistics. Uh, there's a there's a book uh, out. It's called Misuses of Statistics, uh, uh, Lies and More Lies. I think it is of statistics. Uh, I forget the guy who wrote it. It's actually really good. If you ever have the chance to. Uh, to read it. So guys, I'm rambling, um, but uh, uh, I uh, don't really think there's much more to go into uh, with this example.